the idea is that these recommendations are the most relevant to you. It just blew my mind. What's possible with this software? It's a really, really easy model to capture customers at the most high intent placements. What I love the most about this product is that you can actually test your theories here and actually get the real data to support them. For friends of Flomium, just let us know that you came from the podcast or you know Andre and Vera, and we will be more than happy to waive that subscription fee for you. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to Email Einstein, the podcast by Flowium. We are your hosts, Vera Sadlak. And Andrei Boychuk. And we are super happy to have you guys here with us, especially because today's episode um, is very special to us because we brought back one of our favorite guests. (laughs) (laughs) Please meet Gabrielle San Nicola from Disco Ad Network. You guys, if you've been with us for a while, you might have uh, you might have been with us on one of those episodes with Gap, but now she's with a different company. She's with Disco Ad Network now. And Gabrielle is here to share some exciting insights and creative solutions on how to uh, collaborate creatively and effectively with other brands and how to reduce customer acquisition cost collectively. Say hi, Gab. We're super happy to have you back. Hello, hello, everybody. Thrilled to be back for my second spot on Email Einstein. It's an honor. Yeah. So much and have backstory, changed. Backstory, and now I have to do the backstory twice. So just want to say that in there were shifts in 2023 in our of, of agency in, at Flowium, and I'm partially doing part-time uh, as a work as a partner manager in, at Flowium, and we're trying to actually reduce number of partners we work with, but keep only the one that the most impactful for our clients. And when Gabby, you join uh, Disco Network, we chatted and you show me what it can do. And it's just blew my mind what's possible with the software. And I think it would be impactful for our clients. That's why we invited you today to just share with our audience. Because uh, if you said ad network, uh, it doesn't tell much and it didn't tell me much it didn't say much to me what what it means but i hope in this podcast we'll explain what it is and how it works it's pretty exciting um as some of you may have heard i was at another company prior to this i worked at okendo um which was a ratings and reviews platform and had a very clear and easy way to understand what the tool did disco is a bit newer to the market um, and you know they've they've gone through some some iterations of w- how to best serve customers, and I think we've really hit on something very powerful. Um, so I'm I'm excited to chat through and tell everybody about Disco. That's exciting, Gab. So you guys, before we go to all of the juicy question uh, to learn more about the technology, um, I know Andre has prepared some exciting Blitz Q and A questions just to get to know our guests better. Uh, Thank you, Vera. I did customize it a little bit uh, for Gabby, since um, I know a little bit about her. We met a few times. So, Gabby, here we go. New York City or Jersey Shore? New York City. Indeed. I I I love New York City as well. Starbucks (laughs) or Dunkin' Donuts? Dunkin' Donuts. Wow, this is new one. And we... Unexpected. I love hot chocolate. (laughs) And I think their hot chocolate is better than Starbucks. Oh. I, I never have never tried hot chocolate. Okay, so happy it. hour or happy hour or private dinner, dinners. Private around. dinner. Okay, so in so this question in regards speed of transportation in New York City, Uber versus subway. Subway, but I walk pretty much everywhere, so I may put myself on that and say walking. <laughs> I see, I see. I mean, but if you go, if you, if you live if I need in to financial go fast, subway, yeah, if you're in financial district, but you need to go to midtown, like walking probably will take longer. That's okay. True. And the last one from me, audio books or regular books? Regular books. I like to write in the margin. Nice. 
Nice. Nice. nice. And I do have uh, two that I always want to ask all of our guests. First of all, one personal app worth paying for. Just like the app that you love, that you pay for, that you use every day or that you use. Uh, Headspace. That's a good one. Nice. That's a good one. I'm a headspacer uh, myself, so definitely worth paying for. And the last question, okay. last thing you purchased online. Ooh, the last thing I purchased online was a meat thermometer last night as I realized a little too late that mine had broken. <laughs> meat thermometer. <laughs> This is not something I expected <laughs> to hear in your list of purchases, but how exciting. This is actually a super useful thing. I never, I now never cook without meat thermometer. Literally. If uh, Gabby, uh, so, I mean, we, sometimes uh, Vera makes fun of me. If I would respond with that question, she would answer like, you spoiled Americans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but well, since but since Gab yeah, I mean, is our honored guest, I would not make fun, yeah, fun of, of her. Of course, of course. Yeah, I know, I know. I just we had this conversation <laughs> with Andre. I recently moved to London, and we were just discussing how small of the spaces we here have. Like everything is like so small, so teeny tiny compared to U.S. That's why we don't spend money. We, I say, like we have been living here for like a month and a half, but still, we don't spend much money on things because there is now at much space to store this stuff so yeah uh but america is different in that regard i guess well that is that is also a problem with new york city apartments there is not enough room in every shoe box that we all live in to have a kitchen aid and all of these appliances so you have to get creative and crafty with your space cool yeah, but gabby just One thing America, I mean, here in US, we have what not very common in, in Europe, it's a storages. So in addition That's to true. your apartment, you can rent a storage to store your stuff, which is also very popular. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I feel like we are ready now for uh, <laughs> the reason why we got together for this podcast. <laughs> Gabby, for those of us who are listening and who don't know what uh, Desco Network is, can you like briefly explain what Desco is, how does it work, and what's the point of getting a Desco? Absolutely. So Disco is, we are a post-purchase ad network. So what that means is we allow brands to sell their products on other brands' post-purchase pages. So we're a Shopify app, super easy to download. Um, right now onboarding takes about 45 minutes tops. So mm -hmm. we'll connect to your Shopify and pull in all of your product data and whatnot. And then the brand will set a CPA, which is what they want to acquire a new customer at, and a CPO, which is what they'd like to acquire a returning customer at. The brand sets that cost per acquisition And that's what we charge when there's a conversion. So we are a performance-based platform and we have more than a thousand brands on the network and we've mapped out like 90 million US shopper profiles. So mm. Disco data tool really allows you to understand where your customers come before and after they shop at your site which leads for better brand partnerships, really strong collaborations and things of that sort. Yeah, that's, so that's Gabby, very uh, fascinating. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Andre. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry for interrupting. And like, there's some kind of delay. Uh, yeah. So Gabby, it's it sounds very cool, but I have to be here like to like, let's go even uh, more basic. Uh, because mm -hmm. when I hear post-purchase experience, like what does it exactly mean? So w let's say I'm, I don't know, like shampoo brand like, or uh, I don't know. Yeah, like l let's do like I want to sell this kind of like cups. I'm drinking right now coffee from a cup. So I want to advertise. I joined your ad network. So how does it work? Like when, w where do people see my advertising? Yeah. So as a brand, um, we could take Vegamore, for example. Um, Vegamore mm -hmm. sells hair products. Um, mm -hmm. So Vegamore is a customer on the Disco Network. So they have, uh, by 
setting up Disco on their site, that means that not only are they publishing recommendations on their post-purchase page, so I guess, let me take mm -hmm. a step back. Um, you as the customer... Easy, if it's easier, we, we also do this uh, YouTube as a YouTube uh, video. So if it, if you want to share a screen Ooh. and go over it, and we can uh, like also ask you questions as we see things, because it might be easier. Uh, because when you show me visually, it like clicked with me right away. With words, it's okay. like... Yeah, and it's, we can it's, it's smart, hard so. to conceptualize. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah. all right. So then I'm sharing my screen, and I luckily do have Vegamore up. So Disco right. only shows up on the post purchase and the thank you page. Um, so Disco okay. does not affect your your conversion rate on your website at all. So um, basically, when they paid, uh, uh, sorry, I know it's a post purchase, but for me, immigrant who's like second uh, English is second language, just to confirm, it's a when they pay, this is the thank you, this is a confirmation, confirmation that they, like, like mm -hmm. this is a kind of the last page, correct? Exactly, exactly. So okay. in this situation, we've already bought some dry shampoo and some hair serum. This is where the little map is, so it shows that your order has been delivered. And then we scroll a little down here and we see this widget that says customers also bought. So this Ooh, is Disco. That's so cool. Pretty cool, right? So Vegamore is showing a couple of their top selling products um, in this upsell row. So this really helps to increase that average order value in that cart size. Um, so I can mm. just click into this hair serum and then make that purchase and add it into the two products that I got, um, which is very helpful. And then under Vegamore, we have three recommendations here for other brands in the Disco network. So we have built this incredible data set where we have the ability to understand who you are, Andre, and where you have shopped mm. from before and after you came to Vegamore. So mm -hmm. the idea is that these recommendations are the most relevant to you. And you can scroll through and see some other brands that the algorithm thinks are relevant for you. And this is a really great way for brand discovery, right? We've got Caraway on here. We've got some really cool brands that we're working with. So basically, if we really liked this pajama set, I can click on it. This will take me right into the brand where I can then pick the right size that I need for this little pajama set. I want them to be unicorns, so this is perfect. Add it to the cart and then you make the transaction. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing because I, I'm, personally, I didn't see anything similar. So this is the first time I see it. So on the confirmation page of your order, where you have a details of the what your order status of your order is, and right below, there's a kind of widget. There's like this thing where, like showing different mm -hmm. brands. So when I click on the pajama, what you just did to that brand, uh, do you charge per click or how does it work? We don't charge per click and impressions are also free across the network. So in this case, Caden Lane is the brand that makes this little personalized baby announcement block. So a brand like Caden Lane would only get charged if I bought this and I added this to my cart and then I checked out. So we are specifically mm. only charging if there's a conversion that has been made. And we define a conversion as a checkout because that's really what it is. That's the ultimate goal. Makes so sense. basically you are paying, I mean, the client is just paying only if the transaction happened, only if, you, if your tool delivered the result. That's correct. That's correct. And just yeah. to confirm, so Gabrielle, mm -hmm. just to confirm in like in that recommendation section of the tool, are these brands, are they like complementary or can there be like some competitors too? Because that was like my big concern when I first like learned about the concept. Can say in Vegamur section, question. can there be like other some like cosmetic brands that are directly competing with Vegamur? 
That is a very good question. Um, the answer to that is no. We make sure that we do not show any competing products um, or competing brands. So, um, you know, Disco, again, is, is a data tool. And, and once a brand comes onto the network, they pick their category. What they're able to do is pick baby brand, for example, or coffee brand or what have you. So we can automatically exclude any competitors. Um, and we mm -hmm. can also exclude on a brand level or um, on like a category level. So this is basically the this is the back end of Disco. So this is what it would look like if you were a customer of Disco. Mm -hmm. So you would see that you can exclude any subcategories. We also have the option to exclude anything that might be sensitive. So that might be like CBD or sexual wellness or something similar. If that's not something you want to show on your post-purchase page, that's totally fine. So you could have that automatically exclude and then again, you can go in here on your own and you can choose to exclude on a category level and then on a brand level. So if you say, I absolutely do not want to be advertising with Nike, well, that's okay. You can opt out to advertise and have Nike shown on your post-purchase page. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, totally. I, I might be a little bit skeptical, but it's like too good to be true. So like I can open any store, start advertising with this disco and basically with zero ads span on Facebook or Google, like start generating customers because I pay you only for conversions. Is there yeah. any downsides or is there any catch in all of this? Do you take a cut of sale? I mean, I'm sorry. I don't know like how the revenue share, sure. do you take piece of the company? Nope. Nope. There's really, <laughs> there's pretty much no downside to using Disco. It is a pay per conversion model and also for friends and brands referred by Flomium, we're also happy to waive the $50 a month subscription fee. So what that means is that there really is no barrier to entry whatsoever to use Disco. We're a month to month wow. platform also. So if you decide to stop working with us, that's totally fine. You can uninstall the app, but we have, uh, we have brands who have been with us since the beginning. Um, and we're consistently adding new brands every day. And as I'm sure you could imagine, there's this network effect that comes with Disco, right? So when we brought on Dagny Dover a couple months ago, immediately in that week came on a couple other large luxury brand companies with the ethos or the idea that if Dagny Dover's customer is on Disco, then their customer is on Disco. Hmm. So, um, you know, we're, we're looking into, you know, collecting brands in this post-purchase page is kind of like when you check out at the grocery store and there are, you know, the little end caps where there's chocolate and some candy and gum. Here, you have already made your purchase which is the most high intent placement to advertise because that person has mm. already brought out their credit card. They've made a purchase. They're probably buzzing on a little bit of a high because they just got some pots and pans from Caraway. And then you scroll down and you see that you can get a bag from Dagny Dover or a gift for your friend who just had a baby. And then you click through, you make your purchase. You may not necessarily think about it, but it's um, it's a really, really easy model to capture customers at the most high intent placements. So just want to confirm. So you said yeah. there's a $50, you said $50 or how much is the subscription fee? $50 a month on, on the Shopify app. But yeah. if somebody will go through Flovium or mention on this podcast, it's like friends and family partners, uh, you will waive that fee for a month, two months? Indefinitely. Indefinitely. Okay, nice. So for Thank friends you. of Flomium, just let us know that you came from the podcast or, you know, Andre and Vera, and we will be more than happy to waive that subscription fee for you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. It was cool. it was not it was not planned. But so <laughs> another question about pricing. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I assume, let's say, the big, any big brand, or it doesn't matter, big, small brands, not sure how many brands you have in total, but more, more and more brands you will get, it would be harder to get the conversion. So do the do brands need to bid on certain placements? Like, should they show, can they show first or second? Can they show on Vegamore or some other websites? So we are totally AI driven. There are a ton of different inputs that go into the algorithm, but as it stands right now, Disco's recommendation engine really optimizes towards relevancy towards the end user, meaning the Disco widget wants to recommend what's most relevant to Andre and Gab and Vera. So there are, again, a ton of inputs that go into this recommendation engine, but because we do know where you have shopped before and after you've come to just Dagny Dover's website, the recommendations will be completely individualized Mm -hmm. to your customer. So the benefit there is that you as the brand, let's say Dagny Dover, is showing up where their customers are checking out from. So maybe it's on Liquid IV, maybe it's on the Coffee Brothers website, but you as the brand have the ability to show up there. So it's it's very much um, like a set it and forget it kind of a tool. So you won't need to manually be changing your bids. Mm -hmm. You do have the ability to change what you would like that CPA and CPO to be. Um, Normally, we recommend a 20% reduction in your meta acquisition cost. So for example, Faerty, which is like a clothing brand that we work with, they acquire customers on meta for about $50. On Disco, they acquire new customers at $32 and a returning customer at about like $12. Yeah, that's that's super interesting. But like what strategies can you recommend to brands in that Disco network uh, to employ to attract that like high intent customers? How can you make sure that the customers they are getting are high intent customers and that they will have like a high AOV and they will be able to build that like brand loyalty. Definitely. Well, the average order value of a shopper on the Disco network is a little over $110. Um, so we find that we we have shoppers who are posed to buy and they have some extra spending cash. Um, you know, the, the algorithm will do the hard work in terms of prospecting and figuring out what exactly needs to be shown to Vera. However, some a brand that the lever, excuse me, a lever that the brand can pull is with creative, um, you know, Mm -hmm. white background PDPs are great in some scenarios, but if you think about what you would want to engage with in a post-purchase setting, um, we've seen GIFs performing really well, um, holiday bundles or, you know, something that's a little bit customized and attention grabbing is a really great way to to stand out. We do have the ability to support GIFs and and um, images in that way. So brands have the ability mm-hmm. to get creative in what they're what they're showing. So you said that you are able to track what customers buy buying behavior do you mean that on the back end you're tracking a customer in the multiple how they shopping multiple brands yes so um every brand who installs and uses disco basically you know kind of connects their data source to to disco right all of their shopify transaction data so we we are not collecting information in a way where it's against any ccpa laws or requirements but we are able to understand the full shopping behavior for each individual so Hmm. what this looks like and Unfortunately, my demo account is not fully built out, but in theory, what you're able to do when you're in the performance dashboards. So first of all, we're able to see the performance of your brand. So what 
should be showing up is the amount of revenue that's been driven, how many upsell clicks and whatnot is, is coming out. And then this partnerships dashboard, I find to be one of the most valuable things on the Disco Network, where we're able to tell you what your top partner is. Um, and that top partner category. Mm -hmm. And what that means is, so if you're Dagny Dover and you come in, you could see that your top partner may be Caraway. In the case of Caden Lane, actually, this baby brand that makes really gorgeous products, um, one of their top sources of referral traffic is Liquid IV. Very interesting. Can't necessarily say well, why, but we can unexpected, see to be how honest. much... <laughs> Pretty yeah. unexpected, right? And again, this is a demo account, which isn't fully built out, but we can see what brand uh, has driving your conversions, how much revenue has been driven from that brand, how many displays, what the average order value and click through rate for each brand is. So when you're looking at doing partnerships or you're looking at like, expanding your audiences, you would be able to see how many conversions have you gotten from all of these brands? How much revenue has actually come from these brands? And from what category are is a lot of this traffic coming from? So you're able to get a ton of data and actionable insights. Um, again, apologies for my demo account not be fully built out, but you're, you're able to see where that overlap is. So the one I saw, one you showed me last time, but you showed me some other accounts where I see the data and it, uh, my, my brain went on fire because with a bunch mm -hmm. of ideas. So what you just did, for example, this job, like, mm, what, what is the brand? Is they selling t kids stuff, correct? Uh, Kate the, and Lane. The pajamas? Yep, Kate and Lane. Is, 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 they are only for selling um, products for kids or for adults as well? Um, it's pretty much baby products. They do have some like mommy okay. and me sets. Yeah. So when you sell, for example, if I sell a uh, IV, uh, like I would never think to advertise, mm -hmm. for example, in the parents magazine. But now with this data, I know that like if through e-commerce, this is the results I'm getting, theoretically, maybe I should target the parental magazine or parental like podcast. And this is... I mean, based on the data, it's not just hi hypothesis. This is a, a proven fact that people who like um, have kids, they buying I like liquid IV. So I, I think this is more than just acquiring uh, addition like uh, through your network, but it also gives you additional data which you can leverage for other marketing initiatives. Absolutely, that's it's super it's interesting. very interesting to be able to dig in. Yeah, well. Gab, I know you guys are working on new functionality or new product. Maybe you have launched it, but it's called Nurture. Could you please explain more about that product, what it is, what it does, and what can we do with it when it comes to email marketing? Absolutely. So one of the biggest questions that I'm sure your team hears and other retention teams hear is, how do I grow my email list? And there hasn't really been a great answer to that. So now what we've been building with Nurture is effectively a lead generation tool. So what mm -hmm. it looks like in practice is um, after your purchase has been made on Vegamore or whatever site you're using, the Disco widget would show that you have three offers from brands. And these brands, again, are just as curated by that algorithm. So it's not something that you on the brand side would need to focus on. The algorithm would be able to show a brand that would provide an offer. So let's say 15% off. So then once a customer clicks on that offer, there is an email that's sent to that customer with a the discount. They're taken directly to the shop to to shop around with their new discount code. And that email address uh, of the shopper who clicked on the offer goes right into the second brand's Clavio account. So basically, Dagny Dover, mm. you've checked out, you bought some stuff, you see an offer from Caden Lane, you click on it, it takes you to Caden Lane's PDP, 
but it also sends your email address to Caden Lane. So that way Caden Lane can put you into a welcome flow and nurture you into a purchase. So this, this when nurture you, tool. Yeah. When do you show nurture tool versus a regular ad? That is a great question that we are currently answering now that we are beta testing the tool. We expect it to be fully launched to all brands uh, and all customers sometime in Q2. But as we are as we are actively mm-hmm. testing that out, we will be able to let you know. That's cool. And so maybe what, I missed you... it. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, really quick. Maybe I, I missed it, but like at what point again the email is being transferred to Clavio? Like at, at what at what point does it happen at like the right at the post purchase or when it happens on the other brands page? Like what's the process? Yeah. So right after making your purchase, when you scroll down to see the disco widget, it would say mm-hmm. that there's an offer. When somebody clicks on that offer, that's immediately when the email uh, is sent to the Clavio. Um, so that way you guys can nurture them. So it's it's very much instantaneous at that point. How I wish it to work. So to, to by default to show the network ads, but if let's say if the person is not clicking on any ad and they trying to exit the um, screen, so it's like exit the intent to offer, you know, like uh, oh, so you're not going to click on the ad and you're exiting and this is the last chance kind of to catch this customer with uh, some kind of 10% offer because on your ads, you do not show on the network as you don't show any discounts. You just show products, correct? Mm-hmm. That's correct. Yeah, we don't show discounts. You do have the option to discount your products, um, but we don't show pricing within the uh, Disco PDP. So yeah, that's correct. That's a really great idea. Exit intent is uh, it's a pretty powerful pop-up. So I will definitely bring that feedback to my product team. Thank you. You're welcome. Here to help. want to discover how much money your email marketing can actually bring you if that's the case let our team of email marketing experts show you how with our free email marketing audit we'll conduct a comprehensive analysis of your email marketing efforts provide you with action plan and show you how to effectively segment and convert your audience. Simply go to flowium.com slash audit and book your audit today. So Gab, with that information being like transferred automa- automatically like to Clavio, like what email flows would you guys recommend for a customer coming ver- like via that like nurture ch- uh, channel? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, just as I imagine brands have different welcome series for different channels that their customers come in for. The, their, the disco flow should be no different. You know, you, in theory, are collecting an email address from a highly or a high intent placement. Um, somebody mm-hmm. is interested in your brand and clicked on that. So, um, you know, what would be really helpful in that welcome series is probably a bit of education on the brand and on your products. And then layering into, um, you know, just your top sellers, most likely Um, introduce people to your brand as if they really don't know much about the brand, just because they they likely may not. So I I would say that the more effective welcome series will be focusing on education and top product sellers, which will then hopefully be able to then convert that user. So I have two questions about this. So Vera originally okay. like, uh, asked this question before, but I didn't get the answer. So by clicking the offer, let's say 10% off, by just clicking the button, the other brands collect the email right away or do they need to input the email somewhere? Um, we already know the email address as you have just made a purchase and we're on that right. order confirmation page. So you clicking get offer, immediately sends you the email with the discount code and sends your email into the brand's Clavio account. And the email they receive, it's from Disco. It's not from the ESP, like Clavio or some, something else. 
As of right now, the email is from Disco. I believe as we iterate on the uh, on the tool, there will be customization there. But that that is just the the coupon email. Mm -hmm. The brand would still be responsible for putting together that welcome series that would then funnel any disco lead into, if that makes sense. Also for us, for, from retention perspective, from email marketing perspective, what kind of data do you pass? Email, first name, the brand it came from, or what else do you pass through? You know, that is another incredible question that I am not <laughs> sure what else we are I'm passing through. I'm asking incredible through. questions all day today. A lot of, yeah, you're right on the money, Andre. <laughs> Um, that's a good question. I, for right now, it's my understanding that we're just passing the email address over with that. Um, and you know, we'll right now we're just passing the email address over. I would imagine that in further iterations of the disco network, we'll be able to pair signals with that, not only first name, last name, but what products were purchased from brand one, right? And then why would it be relevant to recommend a couple different products from the second brand? So we'll get we'll get smarter as we develop the tool. Vera, so now question for you. Uh, do you mind if I pick your brand as an example? Sure, let's do this. Which one? <laughs> Uh, which one? I have so many. No, I, I know you're like multi-entrepreneurial. No, the book brand. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, I was so, I was Gab, thinking like, about it the entire episode. So let's do this. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Gab, uh, so if you're not aware, Vera writes kids' books, and she already released two and about to release third one. You you didn't release the third one yet, correct? No, not yet. Finishing. Okay, Hope okay. to release it so soon. She, uh, I mean, majority of her sales, if I'm understood correctly, came comes from Amazon. But she All of does my sales have... at, the, at this point. Okay, but you do have Shopify store where you yes. kind of also sell books or can sell books. Would you recommend? Um, and I assume you don't have much traffic to, to your website, correct? Like all the traffic yeah. is on Amazon. Majority of my traffic is still coming from Amazon through Amazon. Would yeah. you still recommend? her to join this co network because there's nothing to kind of to lose only to gain additional right. sales but like the other brands won't like benefit from me being there because my traffic is so low so like what's what's your take on that well it's less about the other brands and specifically just about you and your brand and what you think is great in this situation you are a new author which incredible congratulations uh, you are just getting started. You're generating traffic, which means that you probably don't have a lot of name recognition or brand recognition mm -hmm. yet. Everybody should and will know about you. But as we're building up to that, using Disco is a really interesting way to provide social proof of your brand. If your book company was to show up on a post-purchase page for Dagny Dover, mm -hmm. uh, somebody would look at that and say, okay, I need, I need a new book to read to my little one now that bedtime's coming up soon. So it's a really interesting play for brand recognition. And also just to get that partnership data to understand where your customers go before and after they come to your site, to understand the categories, right? Maybe you'll find that Liquid IV is driving a lot of your traffic too, which we won't maybe know why, but that's a great collaboration to do another book that is, you know, mm -hmm. how the little athlete rehydrated himself. And <laughs> I, well, it's a good thing that you're the author and not me because I don't think I would go very far. But that's uh, it's a really great way for brand recognition and it is pretty low risk for a brand. Hold on, is liquid IV for at least I thought this is when you're like drunk too much, hangover, and then for, then for you take all angry for all of the ah, okay. dehydrated people, <laughs> okay. I guess. I mean, well, and... okay, I experienced different ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a prior life, I worked at an agency and I was running ads for a beard care brand, right? So I was targeting men of a certain age, of a certain demographic, 
And I was finding that my ads weren't really hitting well, like they just weren't landing. But ads that were performing very well were the ones that were directed towards women. So it was my hypothesis that maybe it was the mothers or the wives or the girlfriends or the sisters who are buying these products for (laughs) their boyfriend, husband, boy in their life, whatever it is. So that was that was a hypothesis. But the interesting thing with disco is that you know exactly mm-hmm. where they're coming from. So that way your collaborations get stronger, your partnerships get stronger. And it's a really good way to inform you of further product development, further expansion and marketing efforts. But for Vera's brand, uh, and again, Vera, I'm, I'm assuming this is what I heard. Maybe you change it. I know that your buy buttons are directing people to Amazon. So they are not buying through your website. They're buying through Amazon checkout. So, right. uh, but that's a disco- quite, quite a unique setup, Andre. Normally, people who use Shopify don't send their traffic to, um, to Amazon no, because that's we- like the beauty of, of Shopify to have that like super simple, uh, in super like intuitive checkout, right? It's just because I'm starting for now. That's no, but we have swoon. We have a like swoon brand, like drink, like drink swoon, the the major brand, and they Mm -hmm. all their check out through Amazon. They Mm -hmm. check out through Amazon. They don't do the shop. They they on Shopify, but you cannot buy through Shopify. But I know that some brands are actually like doing the checkout through Shopify, but it's like integrated with Amazon, so the fulfillment is happening with Amazon. So maybe that's their case. No. Uh, yeah, there's I also there's buy so. with Prime, which uh, is is a great feature. Um, Shop Pay is another very highly converting payment tool um, coming right. in this year and the future iterations of Disco. We will offer functionality not just for um, you know opening up ability within Shop Pay but also expanding to other platforms. So maybe Amazon is something Mm -hmm. that we look at. And on that same note, maybe in the future, we have some kind of a partnership with Etsy, where we are showing all of these D2C brands when you're shopping on Etsy after you've bought another really cool homemade product. Hmm. Um, You know, just as Instacart. Sorry. Does Etsy work with you? No, oh, no, 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 no. This is this is very hopeful down the line. Okay. I'm sure we'll get there. Okay. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, in, in the same way that we could work with Instacart or Uber Eats and show mm-hmm. relevant recommendations at any point mm-hmm. in time, you know, we we are kind of focused on building this retail media network for Shopify. Amazon has a retail media network, their ads. It's like $43 billion uh, in value or something absolutely insane. And something like that doesn't exist for Shopify. So there's there's a lot of green space that we're able to work with. And as Vera mentioned, there are some companies that use like Salesforce or they're a custom website and they're using ShopPay. So we are not working with Everlane, but Everlane is a really great example of a brand that is on a custom website and they just switched over and they're using ShopPay. ShopPay converts very quickly and effectively for their customers. So we're, we're looking to be able to support checkouts in a variety of different ways. So maybe Amazon will come at some point soon. But um, you can think about Disco's uh, customers also loved as the same as Amazon's recommendation Mm. engine, right? Like when you check out from Amazon, you buy the really nice sweatshirt, it'll show you customers also loved this baby Mm -hmm. blanket, this pair of socks, this expo marker. So we, we are building that for Shopify and that same ability. Nice. Awesome. So yeah. Vera. What I what I love the most about this product is that you can actually test your theories here and actually get the real data to support them. So that's that's exciting. Data is okay. king. I've got to try and, it, and you guys. With, definitely Vera, do. Just do it. Like I, I have a fifty dollar <laughs> off if you need. You do. <laughs> wink, you wink. do. Mention <laughs> Flomium and we will we will give you a free subscription. Cool. Who knows? Maybe I'll be your next customer, you guys. Yeah. Just do it. Cool. 
Well, thank you so much, uh, Gabrielle, for coming um, to our podcast. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure a lot of brands would be would benefit from a tool like yours. Thank you again so. for your time and knowledge. Of course. Well, always a pleasure to chat with you both and the Flomium audience. If you need to reach out to us, we are at disconetwork.com. You can find me online. You could find all of us online. Um, so we'll, we'll look forward to hearing from you. Yeah. And also after uh, under this episode, we'll include all links to, to Gabri uh, Gab's um, LinkedIn profile, as well as directly to the website. And maybe we'll include her email if allowed as well. Wow. And also the offer you can use to get the free lifetime subscription to Disco Network. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank Bye. you so much for listening. And we'll have you, we'll uh, hope to have you back here next Tuesday. Bye. Take care. Hey, if you're watching this and you like what you see, please hit subscribe and hit the bell because it helps us grow our channel.